Good evening. Uh, nice to see Taradi online. Wonderful. You should announce that you were my student. Absolutely. I am starting with that. I am here to say a few words and then let two of my young colleagues who are young, young men here who are doing a lot of good work for the society to present. Well, this society has a very unique history. It was registered by the president of this country in April of 1972, which is exactly 50 years now. And Mr. Devan Nair was the second president of the city state of Singapore. And in 1972, I was a young boy of 12 years studying in Shubhinba Ashram in the school. And Taradi used to be my captain. So uh, now it's 50 years hence, so it's a wonderful feeling. And uh, Taradi is saying you're muted, Taradi. We can't hear you. You have to unmute. It is unmuted. Muted. Yeah, yeah, no, you are <laughs> yeah, now you're unmuted. You're saying something, Taradi. I was saying that Mr. Devan Nair visited Delhi and I have uh, a film of him with my father. Absolutely. So if, can, Absolutely. if you people want, you can write and I will have to trace it. I don't know where it is. That would film be wonderful. <laughs> he was a second president of the country and he was a man of letters and an English teacher to be precise. He came to Shubhendu because he read Shubhendu's poems, fell in love with Savitri, then became an ardent devotee and called on the mother, met the mother a couple of times in Pondicherry. And I said that period, I was a very young boy in Pondicherry studying in the ashram. Now we are based in Singapore. Our society has about 45 members. And it's a society that's blessed by the mother, and such lovely people have been associated and led the society, the mantle of which has come on to me now. So I see it as a duty and a wonderful duty. The 45 member families who are involved with it, it's quite unique is, it's like one big family. And as integral yoga covers everything, we do pretty much all aspects in a certain way. One of the unique things is last 50 years, we've always had a walk on a Sunday morning. It's very famous all around that the Singapore walks in the early morning at 8 a.m. First Sunday of the month, which I think started during Mr. Natkarni's time, has gone on uninterrupted, without a stop, rain or storm, sun or shine, Eight in the morning, we all assemble and of all ages, we just do a nature walk and we share the positive spirit and we get together in the house of a host. So we'll have typically 25, 30 people. We couldn't do it during COVID times. We had to take special hall permissions. But we go there, we do meditation, we read mother's prayers. And that month, whoever has had birthdays, we invoke the mother's blessings and there is a bit of a brunch which is festive and we get to eat 12 months, 12 different cuisines depending on who the host is. So there's a lot of happy occasion, bonding between three, sometimes four generations. We've had great grandfathers and grandchildren walking together. It's a most wonderful and beautiful exercise. So that's one part. The other part is we are located in a art society which is 73 years old. There is a symbiotic relationship. It's called the Singapore Indian Fine Art Society and we have a hall there. <clears throat> this society teaches Indian classical music and art and dance. And we have 2000 students there. And it's quite amazing that we have been co-located for as many as 40 years. And so there is always an element of music, dance and art which flows into our lives and into our society's activities. Anand, who will speak a little bit about it, is himself a musician and he brings very lovely music. We have all the darshan days, all the special days, lots of programs uh, of young people, youth programs, and all of us to participate. Another interesting dimension is that this society and the small place that Singapore has a dozen of ex Ashram students who studied in the school there. So we all get together and sometimes add some 
more activity and color to what happens in the society. I just would like to acknowledge today and remember with gratitude the leaders who have managed to keep the spirit alive here, starting with Mr. Devan Nair. For a very long time, Dr. Nathkarni, who all of you would know, was a professor of English based in Singapore University, was head of the department, and his daughters were in Delhi Ashram. When I was there and I used to see them, I used to live in Delhi in those years. He ran Shubhendu Study Circle week after week on Sundays in Singapore, which was extremely, extremely popular. We've had Nandalal Bhai, N.C. Patel, who's the father of Anjana Ban in Pondicherry, who passed away at a ripe age of 90 some years ago. And he has been a very active member who led this. Sonia Dain, who some of you will know, is a very articulate speaker and very intense study of the Savitri that she did. Uh, she's turned old and she's now retired into UK. She ran the society for a long time. Thereafter, Justice Raja. Justice Raja was a jurist in Singapore, a lawyer, and very well-read, and he would run classes, and he was leading the society. Last but not the least, we had Mr. Shashilal Kashyap, a man full of art, music, and he was a businessman, but full of love, and he was leading it for a few years, and he then... Uh, we lost him. He's with the mother a couple of years back. And now the mantle is with me and we have some very young people here. With that, I will request uh, to to, uh, share a few slides and tell us our activities followed by, uh, we have Jared. Jared is a teacher, works in Singapore, is a Singaporean, he's been running a youth group. So both of them will speak and share.